So guys, today's video is going to be a little bit more of a serious one uh, because I want to talk about COVID and the pandemic because there's so much happening and so much has changed since I did the last video about it, like many, many months ago, which was still the first wave here in the UK. Um, I don't want to be a downer, you know, I don't want to be just like, hey, let's talk about this virus and then, you know, agitate people to have differing opinions because I know it's very divisive and people have differing opinions on it and that's totally fair. Everyone can think whatever they want, but that's kind of what I want to talk about in this video because at this point, to me, it feels like the problem is the virus, but it's not the only problem anymore. The people are now the problem and how they react to the virus, how they perceive the virus and, and the pandemic and how libertarian views clash with what a situation like the current one requires, right? Because ultimately, what do we have to ask ourselves when it comes to this pandemic? In my opinion, we have to ask ourselves, what are we learning from this? If this happens again, how are we going to manage it better? How can we make sure that, you know, that extent of damage that's currently been done to people, to lives, to the economy, to so many aspects is not happening in the second round? Because who knows, maybe we'll have another pandemic in five years. I mean, you know, we've got global warming coming our way. And in a way, you can see what is happening right now as a trial for global warming. Because the similarity here is both will require a large-scale collective response, okay? Responding to COVID, responding to, to something like, like global warming only works if you have a collective interest in responding to it. <laughs> if you don't have that, then the system cancels its own options of solving these problems out. And I think a key message that we're learning right now, if we want to, from what is happening, is that we here in the West, in Western countries, because at this point, you got to realize this, at this point, it's a Western problem. Okay, Asia does not have this problem anymore. Most Asian countries have overcome it, not to say that they have zero cases, but they found a method of suppressing it successfully so that basic operation can function without the massive disruption that we hear with continuous lockdowns and so on. So it is a Western problem at this point. And I think the key lesson we have to learn here is that we as a Western society, where any country, whether it's the US, the UK, Germany and so on, we are at this point incapable of acting collectively towards one idea. It's just not possible because everybody is in the, under the belief that their liberty stands above everything else, right? If you tell me I can't leave the house, you're restricting my liberty, so I'm going to make a big fuss of it. Disregarding all the circumstances of us being in a pandemic right now and arguing without reason. Okay, that is another thing. We mentioned it previously in, in politic videos and so on. But people are defending their opinions about this and, and, and their idea that their liberal freedom is currently cut into by demonizing experts by refusing to take a vaccine, by distrusting all politicians. It's not just, it's all the whole idea of politics. Everything is wrong. It's all been de demonized. So th these are clearly not rational uh, approaches, right? You can say, yeah, look, you know, a certain percentage of politicians is problematic. Certain parts of the framework of politics, how we currently run it, stem from a different era, right? And maybe we need to rethink some of it. But this kind of idea of being so total in your, in your approach and saying all politics are horrible, all experts are wrong, all vaccines try to murder us. You're not differentiating anymore. And that is a huge, huge problem. Another thing we really can learn from everything I just described from this pandemic and our response is that there is like a massive problem with liberal confusion, okay? I'm not anti-liberal. I'm very much about like personal fulfillment. I'm not for any type of totalitarian system where everybody is like forced into line in regular circumstances. Okay, right now we are in very extraordinary circumstances that don't happen all too often. And I think to an extent it is required for us to limit those liberties that we come to enjoy so much over the years and adjust them for the time being until we have overcome the challenge that we're currently facing. And while this sounds fairly simple, right? Like extraordinary times, we need extraordinary measures, people need to overcome their liberties for a moment and just focus on the collective idea of overcoming this as it has been done in, in China, as it has been done in Taiwan. So there are many examples of where that actually worked, but people disagree, people know better, okay? People have their own opinions, people make their own choices. There is mass confusion. It's, it's like a distorted 
view on individualism. That's what's happening right now. Part of the problem is that we've been educating people in, in these kind of realms, in, in the Western world, the Western hemisphere, about the importance of liberalism, about the importance of defending your rights. And it has been pushed to nearly become an ideology. If you look at countries like China, right, where you have the ideology of collectivism, of working together, of China is bigger than you, That's been indoctrinated into people. And we kind of always put ourselves in our belief system of libertarianism above that, right? We're like, no, we're, we're different. We are free thinkers. We are, we, you know, we are in the West. And we actually, without really mentioning, I, I, we're kind of the better people, you know, because all these, these people without their own opinions and their own type of thinking in China and all these totalitarian systems, it's not up to par with what we are doing. That's the kind of belief that people used to have. And many people still follow that belief, right? I'm not saying everything needs to become totalitarian. Again, all I'm saying is, in the current challenge that we're facing, we can see other nations that have systems that are very alien to us dealing much better with it. There are many other problems on that end as well. I'm not saying it's perfect. Again, you know, don't nail me down on, on these points. But it has become pretty clear that the idea of putting your own freedom above everything has become challenging. I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm just saying it is challenging to create a society that is adaptable, that's flexible, that can adapt to change on the fly with the idea of my freedom sits above everything. So I think in regards to this crisis, we can summarize that our libertarian, me first, my freedom above everything approach has failed. Okay, it's pretty clear. It, COVID has exposed the weak point of our Western society. And it's painful to watch, right? Because like always, when you have to let go of something and you have to acknowledge, you know, you do something, you put work in it, in the end you realize actually it's not as good at other, as other people's. It's hard, man. It's painful because you put the work into it. And so, so we're struggling right now as a Western society. Again, whether it's the US, Britain, France, Germany, all these countries, we're struggling with witnessing how our weak points are put right in front of us with the mirror and we're not admitting it and to be honest that is a big part of this problem as well as if our governments could just step forward and admit the failure and and really pinpoint publicly the weak points and challenges in our society and like be open and upfront about it maybe more people would understand it but we have to come to the realization that this idea of our society being based on individualism and freedom and all that, and that being superior to other systems is an illusion, okay? The Western liberal concept of society is currently destroying itself from within. That doesn't mean it worked great in the 60s. You know, it doesn't mean it, it hasn't been great at times. But right now, like any system, you have to sense check it. You have to run it through a sense checker. And that's what's happening right now because we've missed the point of sense checking the system for so, so long. Now we're being forced to sense check it. Okay, we're being thrown into this and we really need to reflect on ourselves, on our society and what we're doing wrong and what we could do better and why it is not possible to get a collective response in a so sophisticated and educated society. These are the questions that we need to ask because COVID will go away. New challenges will come along. And that is the core problem here. The same people that now are struggling with adapting to a pandemic will be struggling to adapting to new rules when it comes to, uh, to, to global warming. And let me tell you, like I said in the beginning, this right now is like a trial because COVID will go away. Yes, more people will die, but COVID will go away. Not to trivialize it, obviously, I'm just kind of speaking my mind here, but global warming will not go away, okay? The planet will heat up and a lot of people have, have struggles with understanding what this means, right? It's like, okay, it gets a bit warmer. So what, so what? Let me give you one example, okay? One example. So let's say we're doing absolutely nothing And again, it's out there to what extent humans are responsible for the actual heating. Uh, the planet is heating up anyway and so on. So this is a different debate. Let's say we do absolutely nothing. The planet heats up. That means that within, I don't know, 30, 50, maybe 60 years, big areas of Africa will just become uninhabitable. You can't grow crops there anymore. It's too hot. Okay? It's too dry. Humans cannot survive there anymore. So what do humans do when they live in an environment that they can't survive in anymore? They move to the environment where they can survive, all right? So now we can see multi-millions, even maybe billions, you know what the population at the time will be in Africa, moving up north. 
millions and millions of people coming north, coming from these hotter territories, moving into Europe, immigrating, trying to make a life, you know, trying to not die, essentially. And exactly the people who are now like, ah, oh, we gotta stop those corona measures and we gotta, and global warming is not real and we gotta do all these things, those are gonna be the people that ultimately complain, oh, these immigrants, why are all these immigrants coming here from Africa? Why don't they? It's a circle jerk of stupidity. You have to understand cause and effect in these things. And it's the same with like the protests everywhere. If we go to Twitter right now, we can see London protest is trending. Uh, actually, also in the United States politics, it's listed under United States politics. I don't know why that is. This was like, uh, it's posted one hour ago. Let me see if I can't find one where we don't see skulls getting uh, crushed. Oh boy, oh sorry for the audio. I didn't want to do that. But you get the idea. There are protests everywhere. We have the same protests in Germany. We have the same protests in England. And, and it's funny because they interviewed these people and they're like, so what are you protesting against or for? And they're like, because they're taking away the future of our children with all these measures. And it's like, yeah, okay, okay, I see your point. It's true. You know, we are inflicting incredible economic damage right now that will definitely affect your children. But how do you solve it by going on the streets and most probably spreading the virus to more people? You know, this is definitely, these events, you can say whatever you want, uh, but these events do spread the virus to other people. It's just generally a, a bad idea to get together in groups. I understand you want to make your voice heard and you think you're being like, you know, suppressed right now and your liberty is being taken. I understand it. But the thing you're protesting for is the thing you're making worse by protesting. You know what I mean? It's, it's completely messed up to think about. And we get plenty of videos of people being arrested and so on. And you get so many tweets now of people like putting Nazi officers next to the police and saying, look, look at these totalitarian Nazi regime police officers taking down our freedom. No. Right now there's a law because we're in a lockdown in the UK and that means there's a temporary law that forbids big gatherings. That's it. And you are just going against that law. You know, sure, you can say it's not right that I can't protest. Sure, back and forth. But you are acting against the law. That's just the beginning and the end of it. So people don't understand it. Like I said, people are extremely confused and messed up. And I can already see some of the comments, right? People are like, what? You're questioning libertarianism and, and the focus of freedom in society, the importance of that. You're a communist. <laughs> All right, let's, let's talk about this. You know, I'm really genuinely not calling, and I think it's clear by now. I don't know why I have to re repeat this, uh, but I'm not calling for some dubious communist structure to be established in a country like the UK. I mean, just take that sentence I just said and think about that for a second. Let's imagine hypothetically tomorrow there would be some kind of communist government here in the year, like a real communist government. People still wouldn't follow. Look at those people. Nobody is following. We're not even in a communist government who tells you what to do, really, you know, to an extent as it happens in other countries. And people are not following. What do you think would happen? So the idea to say, oh, you just want a communist government, this just makes no sense. You know, these societies like Britain, like England, like America, we've been built on libertarianism and educated for centuries, for generations about these topics. You can't just come and switch a big red switch and say, and now you're a communist. It just doesn't work. It makes no sense. It's another example where people are incapable of seeing the bigger picture, of putting things into context. It's much easier to say, you're a communist, you want communism, than to say, hold on a second is something like that even feasible, right? Is a communist system structure even feasible in a country like the one we're living in? Because the answer is no, at least in the next, you know, 50, 100 years, whatever it is, of course, you can transform societies, but there is no this, oh, you want communism for tomorrow. It's, it's bizarre. It's an absurd claim. And again, it illustrates the lack of of context that a lot of these people people have, right? You need to look at the bigger picture. Even if it's more complex, needs more research to understand it. it, might refute your opinions. That might happen. Let's look at it anyway. So going against all this protest and this kind of anti-mask and anti-corona measures movement, however you want to call it, uh, we can see now that certain airlines start to uh, establish a proof of vaccination. They basically say, look, you can't enter our airplane if you don't have the little thing on your phone that says you've been vaccinated. People are going to go crazy. If you ask me, that's the right thing to do. You don't want the vaccination? Oh yeah, sure. You're going to be excluded from airplanes. And also, you're going to be excluded from, from medical treatment. Right? You, you go to a protest like this, sign a little waiver that says, I don't want medical treatment. If I get corona, I will not accept treatment. I don't need it. Sign it. 
Sign that little piece of paper. Stand up for your opinion. If you think Corona is not real, these measures are exaggerated, people can get together in groups like this. Okay, great. Then pay the price by not, you know, putting your weight on the NHS, the National Health Service here in the UK. I understand that's radical. And I'm not sure, you know, if I would be the prime minister, I would really establish something like that. But the general thought is not wrong, you know, to say, you want these shenanigans, you pay for them. Potentially, you pay for them. Be ready to pay for what you're doing. In my mind, that's a fair deal. And the ironic thing about all of this, oh, the most painful thing about all of this is that we see how we can win this fight in countries like China and in countries like Taiwan and in Korea, South Korea and so on. The manual has been given to us. They're like, look, we entered the autumn without much more cases, without that steep increase and another lockdown and hurting the economy. Here's how we did it. Everybody can see it's not a secret. Here's how we did it. Yet the governments are incapable of reacting to it. And again, it comes back to the question of, is it the government's fault for reacting inappropriately? Or is it the people's fault for not following? Because the truth is, China's economy is booming again because they have immediately implemented and followed a radical suppression strategy. Punishments for no masks. You don't wear masks in public, you're gonna be punished by the police with a fee, but also by the rest of the public who will shame you, who will say, where's your mask, dude? Put it on. If everybody pulls on that string, it works because you're gonna be shamed. 15 cases, nine million tests. I think that's what it was. It might've been 13 cases and eight million tests, but that's what China does, right? They have a few cases in a city, they just test everybody. And then they isolate the cases. And there's no, like, you can see it right here in Manchester, where a big part of your population is like, I'm not going to get tested. It's like, yeah, you're going to get tested. Get in the line. And the belief here in the West is always that people think, you know, China shoots people. They stand there with a rifle and, and they say, if you don't get vaccinated, we'll kill you. No, no, no. People get vaccinated. People do it because they understand the importance of it in the collective bigger picture. They understand it because it's not a highly complex thing to understand. It's just we've been distorted. So our worldview in that regard has been distorted and just doesn't work as well as it does over there. So another example, really early radical lockdown. There were no excuses. I have family in China. My wife is Chinese. They locked people up in their houses. They put guards in front of every living block. One person per household can go out once a day, get food and go back home. That's all you could do. There was no excuse. That was the initial lockdown in China. Since then, they entered the suppression phase. They don't need any lockdown anymore. They're fine now, okay? They're running with it because of the measures I just gave you. Another one is like, if you enter the country, if you wanna enter China right now, first you need a test, a, a negative test uh, done three days before the flight. And then on top of that, you're gonna quarantine two weeks in a hotel room that they give you. Don't know if you pay for that. I don't know, probably not. They give you a hotel room and you're not gonna leave that hotel room for two weeks. Yeah, it sucks, but that's how you achieve results. Can you imagine establishing any of those rules here in the UK or in America or in Germany? It wouldn't work. People would go insane. People would do the opposite. We would see the protests we're seeing right now, but times 10. So the solution to this problem that has been given to us by Asian countries doesn't work in our society. It will not work. And I believe that's why politicians are not even going down the suppression route. They're not even trying to do it. Even we can see it works on the other side of the globe. Even we can see the Chinese economy booming again. Even we can see all the benefits of what's happening over there. Our society is not capable of executing a plan like that. That's a problem right now and it will become a much bigger problem in, in the future. However, I wanted to close this video because this is all very grim, I understand. So I wanted to end this video on a positive note. So I'm gonna give you some of the positive aspects of this pandemic, of what's going on right now. Some for me, some for the bigger picture. One of them being, for example, here, look, a horse escaped, a police horse, middle of London. So you're getting a horse running down the street. Oh my God, he just hit that person. I hope he's fine. Anyway, he ran to its freedom. I would say that horse is more suppressed than most people in those protests. Uh, but there are, other, there are other positives. It's all not just negative. For example, the whole working home, more shopping from home, uh, doing your meetings from home, doing all the things you need to do from home, where previously companies were like, no, no, that's impossible. You want to work from home? No, we can't. That's just impossible. How's that going to work? Now suddenly it works, right? People are doing educative workshops for 50, 60 people. It's like, how are you going to do that? One year ago, unthinkable to do that remotely. 
Now it works. It's funny how suddenly it works, right? It shows that once people are being forced into new patterns, suddenly we can adapt. Humans are quite adaptive creatures, but maybe it just needs us to be forced. So we stop saying, oh, this is unthinkable. I've been doing it like that for 20 years. I'm not going to change that. Is such a working from home, that's unacceptable. Bah, 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 bah. We can also use this pandemic to sense check what we actually need. How much growth do we really need to keep everyone on a level? Maybe there are social structures that are failing right now because they've been established more than a hundred years ago for a different type of society. And maybe now is a good time to evaluate those structures, maybe rethink some of them because nobody can deny, and that's kind of you know where we overlap with some of these protesters, nobody can deny that we're currently in a dead end in our society, not just in like collective responses like I spoke about here, but there are so many aspects, our economy, our growth, the attitude, there are so many problems within our society and we're struggling on so many ends that it is more than necessary to, to question established structures. And this might be a good opportunity to do so. I found this lovely article, let me bring it up uh, on Reddit, which is a little article about narcissistic personalities and how they love being essential workers, okay? So all <laughs> these, these narcissists, they're like, I'm doing really good work, I'm delivering all these parcels. And they apparently, if you read it yourself, I'll link it down in the description, you know, they share much more of all the good things they are doing and they really feel that they are making a difference. So somehow that's a positive, right? The pandemic and, and the constraints and restrictions pick up certain people, certain otherwise problematic personalities and facilitate them somehow, make them a useful part of society, which is very fascinating to me. Also, another aspect to mention is never in the history of humanity have we seen a vaccine being developed so fast and not just one, several ones. If you look into the creation of those vaccines, it included an extreme amount of collaboration between different facilities, between different professionals to achieve this goal in such a short time. So it really is an unprecedented example of global collaboration collaboration. Uh, ironically, that's something that comes out of the opposite, right? The rest of the world struggles to collaborate, but scientists and people have collaborated and have achieved incredible things. You can say whatever you want about the vaccine itself, you know, whether you believe it or not. I know there are a lot of people out there who believe that uh, vaccines are dangerous and so on, but the basic achievement of creating a vaccine like that in this short amount of time is remarkable and it's absolutely a positive not to forget that there was also as much money pumped into this development as never before, obviously, valid point. Uh, but nonetheless, I think it sets a good ground for future collaborations. And that is something that we might be profiting from in uh, future pandemics. People have developed a vaccine in such a short amount of time. Maybe we can cut it shorter next time because we know the processes. We have some of the early insights. We, we can get there faster. So this is definitely a positive, this global collaboration that happened because of the desperation. Um, and then just... As a last one, something that I enjoy personally. People just keep their freaking distance, all right? People just stay away. I like it. You know, walk through the park. Don't walk all up on me. Don't be close, whether there's a pandemic or not. I don't want you in my face. You know, keep some distance. We can still talk. You know, we can still, you know, sit next to each other or whatever. But, you know, personal space is a good thing. Personal space is a valuable thing, at least in my world. And uh, I appreciate people taking a bit more space for themselves. So guys, this kind of concludes the video. That was very long. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Please do not hesitate to leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. I know I've got quite a few people who probably have different opinions on my channel. Again, I would appreciate to have a conversation. Please understand, you know, if you come in and say, oh, but vaccines cause autism, I I'm not gonna reply, you know, to that because it's pointless. But if there are valid replies and valid comments of people you know, debunking some things that I said, for example, with valid criticism and not just a link from some dubious third party news page, then I'm happy to look at it. I'm happy to change my mind because that's also something that's very important going forward from the current climate in these countries over here in the West. We need to be ready to change our minds and to understand that some things we understood just were not correct and are not as relevant anymore as they used to be. We need to understand that being wrong about something is not a big deal. Everybody's wrong sometimes. Just say, all right, I was wrong. I was wrong. Damn. Okay, next time, try to learn from it. Try to be better. There's no shame in being wrong. Anyway, I'm getting into rambling again. Thanks for watching the video. Smash the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe somewhere down there. 
I would love to see you again on the channel. Share the video, that'd be great, and uh, see you next time. I'm out. Bye.